Taking a look at the box between Clemson and Georgia Tech. Week one is done. And with that, Clemson goes 1-0, the number four team in the nation, sputtering to start, but leaning on the defense and in the end creating space. 41-10 is your final with DJ Uyangalale going 19 of 32, 209 yards through the air, another 20 on the ground, touchdown by land, touchdown by air, but less than stellar here in moments as he kicks off the rust and tries to prove that he is QB1 at Clemson. By the numbers, Clemson does cover the 24 and a half, and this one comes in under 51 and a half. All right, let's dissect this one with a surgeon of sorts, CBS Sports scribe of Cover 3 fame, Tom Fernelli stopping by. Uh, Tom, we talked about it pregame. DJU with plenty to prove this season, and he did not do that in the first 30 minutes of this game. Final stat line reads 209 through the air, another 20 on the ground, two total touchdowns, but really looked to be struggling at times. Bad footwork, bad reads, and that sometimes looked a little bit like last season. What did you make of DJU's performance here in game one this year? Yeah, it, it looked a lot like last year. Some stuff to like, a lot of stuff that kind of concerns you about the ability to go forward is Clemson wants to be a team not only competing for an ACC championship, but competing for a playoff berth and a national title like it has in recent years. There are some concerning signs because it's something you touched on. I think one of DJU's biggest problems is he has trouble you know, processing what he's seeing at times. It takes him a little longer than you I ideally like to see your quarterback doing and he's playing behind an offensive line that frankly is not doing a very good job of buying him that time and I think that's part of the problem too is that DJ is not playing terribly but I think there are times where his teammates aren't helping him out very much mm -hmm. whether it's the offensive line not giving him the time receivers dropping passes there's he's made some good throws tonight that just should have been caught and weren't caught he made some bad throws tonight he missed some throws he never even attempted because he didn't see him and took off running so it was the same kind of inconsistent performance we've seen from dj the last year and going into this season and it's not a great sign because let's be real georgia tech is not the one of the best teams that clemson is going to be facing this season yeah maybe we don't hit the panic button just yet on dju or this clemson team but Maybe Uyangalale, excuse me, did enough to at least quell the questions for one more week with a five-star waiting in the wings behind him. There was some clamoring at halftime from the Clemson faithful here at HQ. But we're also talking about a team that it's win now, win always, win each and every week. And if you drop a game and if your quarterback doesn't play well, you take yourself out of that top four ranking or the conversation to be one of the top four teams in the country. Did this look like the fourth-ranked team in the country to you after you saw the comprehensive offering from college football this week? I hope that's not the fourth best team in the country, because <laughs> if it is, we're going to have at least one of the playoff semifinals is going to be boring. Now, this is a team that I think the concern is something that I was, I was touching on a minute ago with DJ Uyunglele, unless he takes a step forward. Like, this is a Clemson team that if you look around the rest of the ACC, a lot of what you saw in week zero and week one of that conference, this is probably still the best team in the conference, and I would think that they're the favorite to win it. It's just... There's, they're not sharp enough offensively to where you think they can get through an entire season undefeated. Defensively, they're still fantastic. That was that defensive front was just destroying Georgia Tech's offensive line for most of the night, getting into penetration in the backfield, blowing plays up before they ever had time to develop. So it reminds me of a lot of the team we saw last year. It's just, is there a pit in the ACC this season that could really challenge the Tigers? Maybe it's Miami. Maybe it's Florida State. We don't know. But it's just that is not a team to me that looked like a national title contender. Maybe it ends up being the four seed at the end of the year if it improves. But it didn't look like one to me tonight. No. Yeah, it is uh, Furman and La Tech before they get number 22, Wake. Uh, traveling to Wake, that is, and then they welcome number 13, NC State. The big one circled, obviously, is Notre Dame in November. Uh, Tom, as you take a look at this team that has plenty of room for growth, the quarterback specifically, where are some of those points that you want to see growth over the next couple weeks before we get to ranked on ranked action? Oh, I would love to see somebody step up in that receiver court. This is a team that over the last few years – has recruited a lot of very highly rated wide receivers, five stars, four stars, but they have had trouble developing them and getting them into the field and having them perform to those ratings in recent seasons. And that was evident, evident again tonight with some of the throws that Uyunga Lule made. They just didn't pull them in. And I would like to see somebody step up and become the alpha receiver because when you look around at the elite teams, yes, they all have very good quarterbacks for the most part. 
But all those quarterbacks typically have excellent targets to throw to. And this is a team that, honestly, you know, you think of DeAndre Hopkins in the recent past. You, you think of Mike Williams. You think of a lot of great receivers, Sammy Watkins, mm-hmm. Hunter Renfro. They don't have that guy right now. At least they don't have – they might have him talent-wise, but they don't have it from a production angle. And that is something that I think Clemson sorely needs if they're going to take a step forward. Because DJ can play well, but if nobody's there to help him, it's not going to mean much. Uh, Clemson surely hopes to get into some scoreboards and some games over the next couple weeks here where maybe they can get the five-star freshmen some looks. Do you think that works counterintuitively uh, to the mind and the belief of, Dewey, of DJ Uyanglele, excuse me, uh, and, and his team behind him? If you do end up in some of those moments, blow out games, and you see what the five-star can do, and then you move into some big games, maybe with more question marks than you have right now. I do think that they should start cycling them in and getting them some snaps because it is, it's important to get reps between a quarterback and a receiver to develop that kind of chemistry so you can start to figure out what a guy does, how he reads a play, where he's going to be, where he likes the ball. Those are stuff that, that's stuff you could practice and pick up something, but until you get it in live action, it's really hard to pick up on. But the problem that DJ might face here is in those blowouts when Clemson starts sending in the backups, they might be catching passes from Cade Klubnik by that point. We saw him get some snaps at the end of the game once they started to bring in the subs. So it's an interesting situation that Dabo's going to have to manage. And I'm interested to see what he's going to do because it was a very short cameo appearance by Klubnik tonight. And he was doing it mostly against Georgia Tech's backups. But he looked pretty good. He brought a little bit of electricity to the offense that really wasn't evident most of the night. Yeah, just a taste there from Klubnik. But uh, this is a team that is lacking in sweetness right now despite a 41-10 final. Tom Fernelli, we appreciate you and your thoughts as always. All right, let's take a look at what comes ahead for the number four Clemson Tigers. We'll see if that ranking shifts at all. 41-10 usually keep you where you're at, if not better that ranking. But as Tom said, didn't necessarily jump off the page as a top five team in the country. They do chart a win here against Georgia Tech. Again, it's Furman and La Tech before you get into some ranked on ranked with Wake and NC State. And then the Fighting Irish, number five. We'll see if that ranking changes after their struggle against Ohio State. That one coming your way on November 5th. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.